Class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we'll be doing another player review. We've gone through the players who have heavily exceeded expectations, the players who were just a bit better than where I expected them to be, and of course, just recently, the players who were just exceedingly average throughout this season and just barely met the expectations that I had for them. But now we have arrived at the players who were actually somewhat disappointing this season, the players who came out below my expectations, which may I remind you, my expectations for all of these Sharks players were pretty low, all things considered. For a player like Evander Kane, I was expecting something like 50 points, and he far exceeded that, which is why he ended up with such a high grade. And so to see a player like Logan Couture here this low was actually pretty surprising and rather disappointing. You see, Logan Couture has always been in a very effective player for the San Jose Sharks ever since his, I guess you could say, rookie season. He had started off at the NHL with 25 games played in his first year, but that was the cutoff point for being a rookie, and so in the following season, he was still considered a rookie, ended up being nominated for the Calder, but losing out to Jeff Skinner, and since then, in that rookie year where he got nominated for the Calder, he's been an extremely consistent and effective forward for the San Jose Sharks. Pretty reliable to be able to get, you know, 60 points, or at least on to a 60 point pace as there have been a few seasons throughout his career he's where he has missed a good chunk of games either due to lockout or you know uh, pandemic delays or just generally due to injuries. And so, where Logan Couture has really shown his true value has not only been on that offensive side, because otherwise would he really get $8 million for being a 60-point uh, player, but also in his defensive play, as well as the next level that he takes his game to when the Sharks arrive in the playoffs. Look back at the 2016 playoffs, Logan Couture was exceptional about 30 points in the Sharks run to the Stanley Cup finals where they ended up losing in six games to the Pittsburgh Penguins there was even discussion in the media that Logan Couture could potentially be up for the Conn Smythe which is of course the playoff MVP that almost always ends up going to a player on the Stanley Cup winning team I believe the last time the Conn Smythe was won by someone not on the Stanley Cup winning team was all the way back in 2003 with uh, Giguere and so the fact that Couture was even in that conversation was you know telling of how good he was throughout those playoffs. Then in the 17-18 playoffs, the Sharks, the year that they uh, swept the Anaheim Ducks and then lost in six games to the Golden Knights, again, Logan Couture was the best player for the San Jose Sharks, at least the best forward. And in the 18-19 season, once again, right up there in terms of points, a very, very effective forward for the San Jose Sharks. When you take a look at uh, points per game in the playoffs all time, at least for active players, Logan Couture finds himself in the 11th position, which may not seem super impressive when you say it out loud, but the fact that, you know, he's in the company of players like Crosby, Malkin, Kucherov, McKinnon is extremely impressive. And he still finds himself above players like, you know, Claude Giroux or Andrzej Kopitar, who have also known to be very good players in the playoffs. So Logan Couture was always able to bring his game to the next level, which obviously made his contributions to the team worth it. However, in these past couple of seasons, the Sharks, of course, have not been a playoff team. And so we haven't really been able to get that type of contribution from Logan Couture. And so you're hoping that the regular season can somewhat make up for it. And last season it was pretty good even though that Couture ended up missing a decent chunk of the game he ended up putting up an 82 point pace of about 60 points which as I said is to be expected from someone like Logan Couture but if we take a look at this season things were a bit different taking a look at the games played 53 games as he missed the last three of the season due to injury that so we will put that over an 82 games pace he still had a pretty solid 17 goals through the season which would have put him on pace for 26 in a full year but it was his assist total that left a lot to be desired just 14 assists on the year which would put him on pace for 22 assists on this full season and as such 31 points in the season which would put him on pace for 48 a career low if we don't count the 25 games that he played in it's technically his first season of his career and that is obviously just not very good Logan Couture, as I said, never really a player who was exceedingly strong in the regular season, but you expect him to, at the very least, do better than what he did here this year, and yet it just wasn't the case. And what's so strange is that at the start of the season is that Logan Couture was looking like a very effective player for the San Jose Sharks. About halfway through this season, so let's say the 28-game mark, it was kind of a discussion who was the better player for the Sharks so far in the year. Was it Logan Couture or was it Evander Kane? And in the last 28 games of the season for Evander Kane, 
Kane, he continued that level of production and finished the season quite strong. But the last, I guess you could say, 25 games for Logan Couture over that final stretch were just kind of bad. To put things into perspective points-wise, in those first 28 games, he managed to put up 22 points, which would be about a 60-point pace in a full season, but in the last 25 games of the season, he only managed 9 points, which would be about a 30-point pace in a full season. So I don't know what happened at the halfway mark. Maybe there was some sort of injury that we don't necessarily know about. Maybe there was some sort of turning point, sort of... uh, Uh, player-wise, like locker room-wise for the San Jose Sharks. Maybe Couture got, uh, you know, unmotivated because it looked like the Sharks were once again going to miss the playoffs or something. I don't know what the case was, but clearly something happened at the halfway point that just made it so that Logan Couture essentially fell off a cliff completely. As we move on to the plus minus, he was a minus 10. And for a lot of other players on the Sharks roster, I have given a pass to them for being a decently sized minus, especially some of the defensemen for the San Jose Sharks. Because as I've mentioned in probably every video that I've talked about this type of stat, it always trends downwards when you're on a bad team. But here's the thing with Logan Couture is that if we take a look at two other very, you know, of the top forwards for the San Jose Sharks, we look at Evander Kane and Tomas Hurdle. Both these players had, you know, very good seasons. Kane, much more or a bit more so than Tomas Hurdle but still and Hurdle was a plus one while Evander Kane was just a minus one and yet and Logan Couture here is sitting at a minus 10. Now obviously you could say this is somewhat due to the fact that Couture does get probably slightly tougher matchups than both Kane and Tomas Hurdle. As I pointed out with Brent Burns, Couture is kind of the all situations kind of guy for the San Jose Sharks when the Sharks are down a goal, up a goal, power play, penalty kill, whatever. Logan Couture is the forward who comes out on the ice to do it when the Sharks need him most. So you could say his plus minus would trend downwards a bit more than those other two players who I mentioned earlier. But if we actually compare Logan Couture to himself just last season, a year where the Sharks were actually a slightly worse team than they were this year, Logan Couture was actually an even zero through last season. And so the fact that now he is a minus 10 in this year shows that was even a downturn, not only offensively, but even somewhat defensively as well. When we took take a look at the time on ice, this is obviously not much of a surprise. 19 minutes and 16 seconds, one of the highest in terms of forwards for the San Jose Sharks. He's behind Evander Kane, sure, but otherwise is right near the top. This is to be expected. As I said, all situations kind of player for the San Jose Sharks. He gets a ton of shorthanded ice time, power play ice time, even strength ice time, and he will continue to do that do that even next year, even with this pretty down year for himself. It should also be noted that he is the captain of this team, and so a lot of the things that will maybe uh, in these past couple of years, a lot of the kind of uh, responsibilities that come with being a captain maybe have sort of weighed on him, and that could also be an explanation for why there has been maybe a slight downturn, especially this year, in terms of actual production. But I can't really take that into account because I don't actually know the extent of anything like that. And so when it comes to his grade, I have to look at this entire year's performance from Logan Couture. There's no playoffs to redeem himself this time around, like there was no playoffs last year to redeem himself. And as such, with a career low in terms of points, a plus minus that leaves a bit to be desired. I end up giving Logan Couture a grade where he, you know, went below my expectations and give him a C minus. Class dismissed.